Previously on Party in Peril. Turns out, some of my men aren't who I thought they were. Oh, and man. the whole ship basically just explodes. Quickly, we need to get you warmed up and hidden. And the hand had been infiltrated, as was the Ecclesia, the Council of Blood. They are a vast network of vampires. My name uh, is not Jekyll's Octostick. It is Jack, though. I'm not very creative. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I do still have the key on me. I, I took it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm coming clean. And he looks at you, Avador, and Jack, and he says, then I will need the two of you to go out and try to recruit at least two able bodies. Maybe the Lord no, no, Octostick I, I think, nope. can, uh, <laughs> can make an appearance. I do. Change into my lordly clothing, <laughs> just in case. All right, so we go to the we go to the tavern. We walk out the door. Go to the tavern. Okay, you um, you walk in the door. Um, you see, there's there's a few people in there. Not a whole lot right now, um, because it is the morning. But there is some people in there, and the the bar keeps kind of uh, cleaning a a glass stein uh, real quick, and and sees you walk in, and is like, hey, what can I do for you? Hello, kind sir. I am Lord Jekyll's Octo Stick. And I require a crew for my ship to to help me travel back to my homeland. I promise riches to those who are able to transport me across the sea. Hmm. Well, uh, I mean, there are a few in here that have uh, uh, looked like they've they've definitely seen a little bit on the water. Some of them are some strange characters. I'll warn you at that, but. Uh, you uh you just take a look around. Uh he he looks at a um an orc that's kinda in the corner, just guzzling down some beers. Um he's like, That one not so sure about. Um if you talk to him, tread lightly. Just be careful. Um He does look able bodied. There's uh there's three others um in this tavern too that you can kinda see. There's Two humans kind of like at separate tables. Um, one of them's just kind of munching on some bread, drinking some wine. There's a another, there's a male that's just kind of looking at like a scroll on a table. There's uh, someone that's just completely, I mean, cloaked, hooded. So you really can't see what they are, but I mean, they do have kind of have a female shape about them. So some kind of female. And then there's the orc that's just chugging beer. Um, so those are basically your four to pick from in this tavern right now. If you wanna, you wanna talk to one of them. And we only need two, correct? You need two. Yes. I I whispered to you. I'm just like, ooh, I like that orc guy. He looks big. He looks scary. That'd be good, right? We do not need so much of intimidation on a board, but we do need some an able body. Who is willing to listen to our captain? Let's let's speak to them and make sure they are not hot headed, if you will. Would a perception check help me in any way? Kind of judge the I don't know. Sure. If you want to, um, if you want to pick a specific one and roll a perception check, I'll I'll kind of give you a few things. Let me give a perception. Do a perception check on the the hooded female figure. Okay. Seventeen. Okay. Should I do one too as well, or? Um, it, that was enough to to do okay. one for her. If if you want to roll for another one, you can. Uh, do they look like they're in pairs? Or no. Like they're all okay. They're all individual. Okay. All four of these are definitely separate. Okay. I'll do a perception check for the one guy that Jack had pointed out. The the, the orc? orc. The orc. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nine. Nine. Okay. Um. So for the the. One that's very cloaked and hooded. She looks like she's just kind of like, she's not really sitting around or anything. She keeps, she'll sit and then she'll get up and then she'll walk somewhere else and sit. 
and you see her like she just keeps doing that and she's kind of looking around a lot like um and going around and touching stuff and you can see that her hand it, it almost looks like she's wearing metal armor but this looks like way too smooth to be armor and and the motions are just too fluid to really be armor it's almost like her hand is made of metal but she just keeps like looking at, at everything and touching things and just like wandering around sort of aimlessly it looks like oh and then the 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 orc you're not able to see oh, like figure out a whole much with with that role but you can see that he has a, a uh very distinct tattoo on the back of his hand uh let me go up to the barkeep and be like um yep uh uh, small one, are you allowed to drink, young lad? I I choose not to at this moment. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. What I, I would like to know, what you know about this uh, this woman over here, this, this hooded figure over here who is, it looks like she's looking for something, but I'm not sure what. And is her arm metal or is that an armor? What do you know about this this woman? Oh, I can tell you this much. That's something I've never seen before. So she she walks in, doesn't say a word, just starts looking around. Even walks behind the bar at one point. And it's, she just gets down and starts touching everything. Touching my glasses, this one I'm cleaning right here. She touched it, was tapping on it. Looked like she tried to sniff it. I don't know what that was about. So that's why I'm over here cleaning everything. But this is the weird part. She looked as if she has a metal face. And I don't mean like a helm or a mask. It's it's almost like she were made of metal. With these weird eyes, almost like there's lights behind these eyes, like they had like a bluish kind of uh kind of glow to them. I've never seen anything like it, but we see some weird stuff being, you know, so near the docks. This is a, a rather large port. Lots of people stop here. So I've seen all kinds. This one, never seen anything like that before. Wow, that's almost like a, a construct or something. I don't know. Is um, it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. I, I may approach her and see if there's anything she can tell me. And I, I flip him uh, a gold coin. Oh, um, thank you, young lad. That's, where did you get this money? That's very odd for a small man, but you did say you were a lord, I suppose, so. All right. I have spoken, and I walk <laughs> off. Uh, and Barkeep, what do you know about the orc? Ah, that one. Yeah, not much for talking. I just bring him a tankard of ale every once in a while. He accepts it. He pays. Doesn't say much. Just kind of nods. However, you see that uh, that tattoo on his hand. Uh, it's uh, the uh, orc skull right there on the back of his hand. That marks him as one of the skull grip clan. And all I know about them is uh, they were almost completely wiped out about a decade ago near the Basilisk Bridge. Didn't think there was any left, to be honest, until I met him. Seems okay, but you never know with orcs. They can be a little unpredictable, but so far, he's been just a fine patron. He's got the money, he pays. And our hooded friend whom you were talking about, does she eat or does she drink ale? Have you seen her ask for any sort of food? Uh, now, here's what's weird about that. She hasn't asked for anything. In fact, she just kept walking around looking at things. I eventually asked what her deal was. Um, that's not very medieval of me, even though I'm speaking like that, to say what's the deal, but I did that. <laughs> so we're going to go with it. It's now canon. Uh, all she does is kind of look at me and smile. I even asked her if she was going to purchase some some bread or ale or something. and. She just kind of asked why and kept on looking around. Interesting. Starting to think maybe not, uh, you know, she's got some light up eyes or whatever, but uh, maybe not all the lights are 
turned on upstairs, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I do, I do. Thank you, sir. I would also like to use detect magic. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, which, uh, for the duration, mm-hmm. if I sense the presence of magic within 30 feet. So uh, if you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around or any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. So I would like sure. to use okay. my magic. Um, so you so you do that. You uh, kind of reach out into like the ether and you're just kind of like... Um, um, it's like your eyes kind of unfocus for a minute and then refocus and you're kind of seeing this this faint glowing aura around the the female human that you can see. You can see that she definitely uses some magic. You can also see that the male human also has some magic and both of them are, are feel pretty strong. But that cloaked female is lighting up like a Christmas tree. You are seeing... Tons of magic radiating from her. It's unlike anything you have ever seen before. Jack, before you go and approach her, I must tell you, these chaps over there, they have magic, and especially our cloaked friend. She is nothing but magic and quite strong. Either she has a master or someone is after her. Maybe you should talk to that one because you know a lot more about magic stuff than I do. I just realized my arcana sucks, so I wouldn't even know. <laughs> I wouldn't even know what a what a construct or anything was, let alone know how to deal with it. So, I think I'm going to okay. reroute myself. Sure. All right. So I will approach her, okay. and uh, and try and get her attention. Yeah, she's kind of just like looking around right now, and and like at uh, right now, she's she's very meticulously studying a stair, like. A set of stairs goes up to another like loft within this tavern, but she's just really examining this one particular stair and kind of looking at it, and she's like running mm-hmm. her hands along it and stuff. Hello, friend. I I see that you're quite interested in these steps. May I ask you what uh what is enticing? What what is that you're looking for? She stands up really quickly and turns to you like I mean so fast it's like weird like how quick she was able to do that. Um, and you're looking at her and you can see, yeah, like she looks like she has been welded together from like pieces of, of plate mail and armor and stuff. And it's been polished and refined to the point. It looks like a, a the face of like a, a human woman, but this is made of just pure metal and the mouth moves when she talks and you can see she doesn't have eyeballs, but she's got these sockets with this blue glow emanating from her. And you can kind of see like through her uh, robe that she's wearing that her chest is also completely metal. And there is a large blue kind of like crystal sort of like embedded in this chest that's giving off a faint glow as well. And when she talks, um, not only does her mouth move, but that, that crystal, the light on it kind of vibrates a little bit. So it just kind of flutters in and out as, as she speaks. And uh, she says, it just looks very nice. Hi, what's your name? Avador. Oh, what's your name? Avador. Oh, I know who you are. My name is Jewel. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. And yourself? I am doing very good. There's lots of things here. What, uh, what brings you here, may I ask? I was curious. Curious? Are you uh, documenting any of your curiosity? No, but I'm good at remembering. I remember all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, skilled in the art of the sea by any chance? I have been on a boat, if that helps. And I have learned. I have watched people. I remember everything they did. Interesting. That's a quite a wonderful skill of yours. Yes, it is. What uh, what are your thoughts on... uh, Pursuing your curiosity on a on a ship with my friend and I. Oh, that sounds fun. Where are you going? We are going to a land called. Are we still going to Ponderous? I think so, right? You can. Oh, no, no, I mean, on, no, we're, It's up to we're, you. So I can tell you, like on the map. So the captain said he would take you as far as Ponderous. Um, the only other place. Let me see what other places there are that you could stop at. 
There's a place called uh, Wildemar, but that's not very far from where you already are. So mm -hmm. depending on what you want to do, it's not going to get you very far and it's kind of pointless. Otherwise, uh, Rice and Ether, which is where Avador is from, is along the way. And then Pondalus is after that. Maybe Rice and Ether. Jewel. Yes. With, within your skills and your curiosity, you wouldn't happen to be... Uh, remember any sort of healers of magic. Healers? Well, my master knows lots of magic. I have never seen him heal, but he did create me from something. Your master? And where does your master reside? Oh, he's from Rysenti Ether, where I am from. He's spoken of you many times. Who's your master? My master, Kavela. He is your master too, correct? That is correct. In he fact, is both our master. I agree. I, I agree, Jewel. I suppose that makes us sisters. I have never had a sister before. Neither have I. Would you like to go see our father? Yes, that sounds quite lovely. I have not seen him in four days. Four days? Did you just that arrive? Is correct. Yes, I arrived this morning. Interesting. What, uh, how did you get here, by, may I ask? I came on a boat. Whose boat? It was a very nice captain named Sterner. Captain Sterner. That is correct. Where were you going? Where were you, where were you leaving to? I just got passage on his ship. I was going to go wherever he docked. Interesting. Does, does our master know that you left? Yes, he does. He wasn't very happy. But he understood. I, I suppose we should go back and, and see how he's doing, do you not think? We should do that. He gets very lonely. Agree. I, I suppose he was lonely when I left. He was very lonely when you left. I like how matter of fact she is. Yeah. Uh, Jill, let me introduce to you uh, my friend here. His... Not, not yet, not yet. No? I'm, I'm doing something else simultaneously. <laughs> okay. You're like trying so, to hide, like, no, 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 don't look uh, over here. Uh, All right, so we'll turn and you're, and well, whatever not, it is. Not even that, like, while you're doing this, I'm doing something else is yeah. what I'm saying. Okay. So you're still uh, chatting from a Basically, distance. it's a different camera angle, different perspective. Okay. And then I'm over there trying to, like, wake that orc up or, like, uh, just, like, get his attention. Like, oh, okay. excuse me, excuse me, sir. He sir. just kind of looks at you and he's like, just grunts. I require a strong hand to aid me in my in my journey across the sea to my hometown and would appreciate it and will compensate you very... Oh, shite. I lost... What was the word I was looking for? Uh, would, uh, Is this all like happening in real time? Like you were talking a certain way and then you started talking <laughs> a different way and you're like, what was yeah. I going to say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically if, if I were truly in there that's what it would be um, <laughs> and I will compensate you very handsomely for your assistance he kind of looks looks you up and down who the fuck are you <laughs> I am Sir Jekyll's Octostick and I intend to get passage to Rice and Ether. Jekyll Octostick you say <laughs> yes nervously <sighs> And where is your homeland, Octo Stick? My homeland is in Arkham, but I must get to Rice and Ether first before we travel there. I want you to roll a roll a deception real quick. Oh, thank God! I and need you're gonna have dice. to roll really high. Oh, <laughs> not great. Mmm. What did you get? Plus what? Plus five to that. Um. So thirteen. <laughs> no. Um, oh. So he's going to look at you and he's going to chug back some more ale and slam his, his tankard on on the table and he goes <sighs> There's no Octosticks in Arkham anymore. Where are you really from and what do you want? Okay, okay, I'll come clean but I still would really love your assistance. So I am I'm I, I'm an orphaned child who has had to thieve his way through life to get to where he is. I've lost any kind of guardianship that I had before, and I need assistance very badly, very quickly, to help my friend and to get us where we need to go. 
I we can pay you handsomely. We just need this assistance, and you look like a very abled body orc who might be able to help us. Most wouldn't approach an orc like me. What brings you to me? There's other in this room. You look like the strongest one in the room. Can I use a persuasion? Yeah, I'm go trying ahead. to get on his good side after sure. getting on his bad side and lying to him. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> I got a seven. A seven? Oh god. Yes. Well, I was rolling so well before just now when I need it most. Did you charm him? <laughs> that that was my charm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he he kinda looks at you and he, he flips up um he's got like an, an eye patch on over one eye and he kinda flips it up and scratches at the hole where an eye should be and then lowers it back down. And he uh, says, hmm. I don't think so, little one. But you do have guts for trying. And he kind of slinks back in his chair and then slams his tankard on the on the the uh, table again. And the barkeep kind of runs over like, son of a, okay. Brings him another tankard. <laughs> and then and the, the orc's trying to shoo you away a little bit. Well... I appreciate your time anyway, uh, and I I give the barkeep uh, a couple gold and say, the rest of this man's drinks are on me. Hmm. And I start walking away a little defeated, but hoping that he took the hint that I do have money and can pay mm-hmm. him. You can see, like, his, his interest is peaked. He's not saying anything, but you can tell, like, he's probably going to be watching you a little bit for the rest of the time that you're in this tavern. And I'm going to go over to uh, meet with um, Avador then, probably right as she's finishing her conversation with Jewel and transitioning to where it's like, let me introduce you to my little friend. So that way we can tie those two things <laughs> <Okay>. together. <laughs> so she she looks down at you. She goes, hello, I am Jewel. Hey, I'm Jack. And she, Jack. she bends down and she's looking at you like her face is so close. It's uncomfortable. You know, she doesn't have any breath. But sh- her face is right against yours, and she's just like, you are very small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just disappointed right now. I'm really frustrated that I'm, I've am i been failing at everything. So I'm just being short. I'm not even trying to put up the lie of the lordly ship anymore. You seem sad. Is it because you are so small? Well, that might be part of it. But right now, we just need some help, and uh, I I wasn't able to get it for us. What may I do to help? Well... Uh, what have you talked to Avador about? Oh, we talked about lots of things, like our father. Y- your, you fought, sing, like one father? He is technically our master, but he helped create me, so I refer to him as father. I just look at Avador, like, like, uh, yeah? Jewel points at Avador, that <laughs> is my sister. I, I just sister. learned this. <laughs> well, that, that makes two of us sin. Avador, what's going on? It seems uh, my sister Jewel and I have uh, the same master. And incidentally enough, she has left our father and she has agreed to come with us. His magic should be strong enough in order to help us with Shepard. He is very powerful. You both keep saying, like flipping between master and father, what is the... He is not my biological father, but he did raise me as one. And it seems that after I left, he was not in good spirit and has created a creature, which is Jewel here. And she is of his magic. So therefore, we are of the same relation. Well, is is she going to help us? Are you going to help us, Jewel? I am going to help you. She's very skilled. She's got memory. She can. We can use this. <laughs> I am also good at making things. All kinds of things. She seems to be a tool of some sort. Well, that's not a nice way to put it right in front of her. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good thing, Jewel. Trust me. (laughs) Thank you. I will take Tool as a compliment. Did you ask the other other people our oak friend couldn't come with? Well, I don't know that he couldn't come with, but he definitely doesn't want to come with. I can tell you that. So we need to look elsewhere. The other two people seemed Who were the other two again? I was just so focused on that stupid orc that I lost track. One of them isn't really eating or drinking much. He's just kind of looking over scrolls. Um, He's this uh, male human with like dark skin. He's got very sharp, piercing purple eyes, and he is very well dressed. 
He's got like a, a silken, a blue and, and gold robe. Um, and he's just kind of like pouring over a, a bunch of scrolls that are um, like laid out on his table. And then the the other one is a uh, female human. She's got kind of like, say, like raven kind of colored hair, green eyes. She's wearing leather armor. She's got a red cloak. And she just kind of, she's very much just kind of concentrating on this red wine that she has. And is just sort of like, looks like she's just happy to to be there and be relaxing. Like she's just kind of not quite on vacation, but you can tell like she's she's happy to be kind of not tied down to anything right now. She's just a free spirit at the moment. That guy looks like he uses some kind of magic. Are you able to tell me? Are are you do you know what kind just by looking? Uh, yes, actually, I de- was able to detect all of them and. They too have magic. Avador, do me a quick, um, just do a straight Arcana roll real quick. 19. Okay. You can tell that the man, he is a a sorcerer, which means he is very naturally skilled at magic. Um, whereas um, a lot of the people that you may have met in your past at like Rice and Deathir, that was a kind of like a wizarding academy. So that's like people that might have a little bit of magic, but they have to learn a lot to become more powerful. People mm-hmm. like this guy are just born that powerful. And then the, so you know that he's, he's a sorcerer. The female, you you can pick up like kind of a dark magic kind of aura from her. And you've kind of recognized this sort of magic being very similar to the kind of aura that Shepard has around him, which means that you know that she is a witch. Mm. I suppose it depends if you want a sorcerer or a witch on our passage. I don't know much about magic. What do you think would be more helpful? She would understand Shepard. She is of the same blood, but it could just be the skin and the material, the shell that they are, seeing as we now know that his soul is not of the same well, hold on. Body. Was she a dark elf also? No, so she's she's a human, okay. but she's just kind of um emanating a very similar magic aura. Magic. Um, part. Okay. So so it's basically that that her and Shepard have the type of magic that they wield is is the same. It's okay. very similar because you know now that that Shepard was a human, but he did grow up in a witch coven. So he kind of naturally has that same aura that this woman has. And the guy, he just has the really the, the dark skin and piercing, like purple eyes. You said, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. He's he's just a different kind of magic. He's a, a sorcerer, but between him and her, they're probably both equally powerful. Uh, it's just different types of magic. Different types of magic. Yep. He has really fancy robes on, so I, I'm assuming <laughs> he he knows a lot about magic. What do you think? I'm sure he does. Um, I say talk to them, see if they're able bodies to do hard labor, because for someone like him, who probably has all these fancy garments, I'm not sure if he's willing to be dirty. But I bet he has magic that can do stuff for him, right? And can't you guys like lift stuff up with your magic, move stuff with your magic? I believe you are talking of a, a space frontier <laughs> that uh, was, the land might not be able to. I was trying to stay away to. from using the force as a reference, <laughs> but I know you have a move object kind of thing. I think maybe not you I specifically, haven't. but yeah. I think someone like him do. would probably have that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. power. Okay, um, Jewel d- <laughs> has just been kind of listening, and she's like, "His robes are very shiny. I wonder if I could touch them. Maybe if we can get him on our side, he'll let you." May I not touch them now? My maybe not yet. Let me see if he'll come over to our side first. She kind of cocks her head at you and she's like, "Okay, thank you." And so I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> Thanks, Jewel. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over there and uh let me let me try to summon some some good lying power real quick. <laughs> good perception. Good deception. Deception, yeah. Um okay. I walk over there uh, crying. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> sir, please, c- can you help me? Oh, oh, stand back. You're going to get tears on my robes. What what, what do you want, child? I, my friend, he's in a lot of trouble and I need a lot of help from someone can, who can use magic. <laughs> you, you look like you're able to. 
I saw you looking through those scrolls. I don't know if you can help them, but I need anybody who can help. What ails your friend? I don't know. That's the thing. We just need somebody to help him. You look like a really smart, charming individual who, <laughs> who, may, be able, who may be able to help my friend. Well, I appreciate the flattery, but I do know already that I am charming. Um, <laughs> Persuasion. Why do you think magic would help your friend if you don't even know what ails him? All that I know is that there was this magic spell that seems to have knocked him out, and, and now he just won't wake up, and I don't know what to do. None of us know what to do, me or my friends. So you just want me to go see what's wrong with your friend? And help him if you can. You know a lot about magic, don't you? I know a lot of magic. I might be one of the most powerful magic wielders in this world. However, I am not a healer. So, if you are looking for a healer, you may want to find a cleric or someone of the cloth. I don't think healing magic's gonna work. I have friends who can heal, and none of that seems to work on him. Nothing's waking him up. So, I just need someone who knows a lot about magic, and like I said, you look really smart, and like you you would know what to do. And you just already, you already said you're one of the most powerful magic users in this land, so I think I came to the right person. Please, please help me. So if I take a look at your friend, you will leave me alone. Is that it? I'll leave you alone. We can, we can, I can offer compensation, whatever you want, sir. Well, where is he? he he's literally in the next room, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is. Okay. He's, he's just a short walk away. You just come right out this door with me and we can take you to him. My friend and I. Okay. Right, sorry. My friends and I. I forgot that Jewel was with us. I suppose I can... Take a look at him. I well, don't know that I would be able to help, but I will at least look. Please, that's all I ask. What's your name again, sir? You can call me Cosmos. Oh, that's a cool name. Cosmos. It's spelled Thank like you, K-A-S-M-O-S for those wondering. Cosmos. Cosmos. Thank um, you, sir, Cosmos. I appreciate it. Do you have time now? I'll pay your tab. Just please come over and help me. Sure, let me just gather up my things. And he takes like five minutes to roll these scrolls up, like just so carefully. Just rolling, 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 rolling these tiny little scrolls, and there's tons of them. And he finally gets them in a little bag, and he stands up, and he stretches a little bit, uh, cracks some some fingers. He looks at the floor and, and just kind of sees that it's, you know, it's a little dirty. And he's like, hmm. And he... Like, wiggles his fingers a little bit, and you can see he's just barely levitating above the floor. Now show me to your friend. <laughs> I like how OCD this guy is. This is going to be a, <laughs> a fun person to have on our side. <laughs> okay, so we we walk him. Well, first, uh, I guess we can introduce him to you guys. This First, before we go over there, this is my friend, Avador, and my other friend, her sister, Jewel. Oh, great. Jewel. Yes, Jewel and I just shared a ship together, unfortunately. Jewel says, Hello again, Cosmos. Pleasure to see you again. Well, I haven't really not seen you because you won't leave me alone. Uh, <sighs> Cosmos, we'll, we'll try and make sure that when you're on ship with us that it'll it'll be a little different. I'm sure Jewel will be... I'm, I'm just trying to like ixnay. It's like Sh ship. <laughs> I didn't tell him about the ship. What ship? I did not agree to board a ship. I just deboarded a ship. I was to look at your ailing friend. Oh, that is all. Yes, yes. First things first. We we have to get over to him. He's he's right here. Just please come over here with me. Mm. Sure. I will do so with no more deceit, young man. Everything I've told you so far is true. Please just walk over here with me. Okay. So he's or he's floating. Float over here with me. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's just floating around. So you're leading him to the uh, Yeah, lead him the to room. the room. Lead him to um, okay. Shepard's side. Dear Nine, why is he nude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I get a little cloth thing and just cover his, his privates. <laughs> Nobody's dressed the poor bastard. <laughs> 
<laughs> At least he's not in the sexy pose anymore. Huh. A drow. Ugh. I do not suffer drow. This is your friend? It's a long story, but he's a good person. He uh, kind of levitates over towards him, and he's like looking around the room a little bit, like kind of eyeing the dust and stuff that's around, and like grimacing a little bit. Looks down at the floor. Dirty. And then he, he puts a, a hand on Shepard's forehead. And you can see, like, he kind of winces, like something hurts a little bit. <sighs> Your friend, his soul has been damaged. What has befallen this one? We are already aware of that. This is why we're trying to get him to my master in R- Rycine de Ether. I <laughs> say it? Your master <laughs> is Kavela. He is. That is where I just came from. He is very stubborn. He'll listen to me. He is actually my father. That raises a lot of questions. However, as I said, I just came from there. And he's looking at at Shepard and he's like, This one I cannot help with. But your master probably can. Are you of able body? Would you be able to come aboard with us and... And return. He uh, he opens his robes just a little bit, so you can see like he's he's got a, a little bit of uh, a little chest there. Like he's in good shape. He's like, I am very able bodied, <laughs> but no, I just left Rice and the Ether. I just spoke with your master, who is extremely, aggravatingly stubborn. <laughs> stubborn is not a word. Stubborn. <laughs> That. He's very stubborn. What did you need? I tried to convince him to move his academy and the magic users that he would train to Katil Kar, where the Sorcerer's Guild is. That is out of the reach of the Ecclesia. He would do much better there, but he would not listen, and I am finished with him. I understand your concern, and although politics aside, this has nothing to do with that. I We simply just need our friend to be back. We simply need to heal his soul. Is there any way that you can be able to help us? There is nothing I can do for this one. You would be best to get him to your master, though. I'm sure he would have something to say. And then he kind of just glances around the room again. Scrunches his face up and then levitates out the door. Mm. Jack, we need someone to help us with the boat. (laughs) I'm having trouble here. Why are you not telling them this? (laughs) Well, first I wanted to see what was wrong with Shepard. I didn't know. Yes, you do. You were there. His soul. You told us. Well, this guy soul. looked like he was strong with magic. I thought my, maybe he could help and we didn't have we to go have all the way there. We have a plan already. We need someone to help us with the boat. Fine. I, I, I storm off. I go right back into the bar. Um, you all right, lad? You, you seem a bit off. I'm fine. And I just walk right up to that <laughs> other lady who was there since the, the orc ignored me. The guy's a... Uh, uh, he's not going back. I don't want to try to convince him. So, okay. <laughs> she she cocks an eyebrow at you. Um, now, close up, you can kind of see that she, she's got a little bit of a, a wicked smile to her, and she actually has a black owl perched on her shoulder. You didn't really notice before. It almost kind of blended in with, like, she's sort of keeping to the shadows a little bit of the tavern. She she looks more amused than anything, and uh, she kind of swirls the, the red wine in her glass. She's like, saving me for last, huh? I'll try not to take that as a slight. I'll try to take that as a saving best for last. You didn't look like you wanted to be bothered, so I didn't bother. But here we are right now. Depends on what you're bothering me with. Well, I need someone to help us get over to Rice and Diathir. My friend's in trouble, and we need someone else to help us on the ship. So anyone who has any kind of familiarity with... Uh, w- with any kind of um, uh, ship riding ship, like, what is it called? Sea legs. <laughs> Anyone who's got <laughs> any sort of uh, familiarity with traveling across the sea would be of great assistance. And I didn't mean to save you for last. I just didn't want to bother you. Here I am now, a little frustrated. As you can see, you've seen me struggling. 
please, if there's anything I can offer you, could you help me for my friend? She sets the wine glass down and she's just kind of haphazardly like looking at her fingernails a little bit. And she's like, well, I could use some information. Have you seen any members of the Hand of the Ecclesia? They happen to be hunting us down, so I see them periodically. <laughs> I'm looking for one in particular. Um, his name is Halsey. Have you seen him? What did you need him for? I was going to kill him. Well, uh, good news. We beat you to it, and <laughs> he won't be a problem anymore. What? She looks at her owl, and her owl, like, kind of cocks his head down, and his shoulders of his wings come up a little bit, like he's shrugging. <laughs> like that, like the owl gets what's going on. It's just like, I don't know. And she's like, you're saying you killed Halsey. Well, my, my friends and I, not just me, I won't take full credit, but he is definitely dead. Interesting. Interesting. You know, Halsey was part of my coven. Oh, by the way, I'm a witch. I don't know if you could tell from the, the, uh, the clothes and the, Owl perched here, but I had an idea. He was from my coven, and at some point, he started killing other witches, not part of our coven, but we don't slaughter our own. Uh, he came back to our coven for a while um, to visit his wife and child. Apparently, something was off about him. He was basically banished, but that's not good enough. We know what he had been up to. So I was here to kill him. Alas, he's already dead. Huh. That's a pity. Well? And she's looking at you, and she's like, So, sorry, why are you here again? I don't think I was really paying attention. We need to get across the sea to Rysendia Theer, and I need to help my friend. We have to get him there as soon as possible, and we need someone able-bodied to help us get across there. Uh, just anyone who's willing to offer assistance. And it seems like we've done you a favor, so the least you could do is help us out. To Rice and Deathir. Witches have never really been welcome there. I know that much. How about this? You say you need to help a friend. Who is your friend? Witches are good at healing. Well, my friend is Shepherd Black... And his soul has been damaged from what I understand. So there's no healing that we've been able to come across that could help him. But we do know that there is some someone in Rice and Deathir that can help us specifically. She looks at the owl. The owl kind of like twists his head around, then twists back, and then cocks his head to the side. Yes. <sighs> I suppose. So she gets up and she's like, show me your friend. Walk her on over to the next room. Okay. Okay. They they walk over there and she walks inside and she's like, ugh, this place is disgusting. Is that uh, your naked friend there on the floor, the drow there? Yep. That's him. Are you guys still in there too? Yeah, we're still in there. This is my friend Avador. This is her sister, Jewel. Sh Jewel says... Hello, witch friend. I am a tool. <laughs> um, pleasure. My name is Rhea from Eslam. Hi, I guess. She uh, kind of brushes past everybody and then walks over to Shepard on the floor and is kind of looking at him and then she's like, Who did this to him? It was Halsey. We were during a battle. He was in the process of dying himself. And as he was dying, he started creating this enchanting words and both souls were coming out of the bodies. We were trying to stop him before as he was dying, he was trying to transfer his soul into our friend's body and we were able to stop him before he, he finished the job, but in the process, he seems to have damaged our friend's soul. We repaired his body. His body is, is, is quite fine, but it's his soul. He, he won't wake up. Okay, that's... Very strange, but then again, Halsey was a bastard. <laughs> and she um, kind of gets like some, digs in a few pouches and she pulls out a few um, like different powders and things like that. And she's 
um, mixing it together in this little jar with a with uh, this like stone rod. And I know those have a name, and I can't think of it right yeah. now. <laughs> the the um, um, brick and mortar, or not brick and mortar. What is it called? Yes, is that what it is? The it is a mortar uh, pest, pestle and yeah, mortar, whatever. Right. She's got that. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's putting a few things in there. She walks over and and she throws a few things on on like uh, powders on the fire and blows in it, and you can see it kind of roars to life again, and then. Um, she spits into what's still in the the little jar part and then kind of um, rubs it and mixes it in. She walks over to Shepard and she places some of it in his mouth and then she places the rest of it and and makes a few like patterns kind of on her forehead and stuff and around her face. And then she kind of kneels down next to him and throws her robe off and she has her arms outstretched and, and it seems like the the entire shack just completely starts going dark and then the fire just roars to life even more and there's like little um, motes of light just kind of starting to float throughout the room and kind of swirl around her and Shepard's body and she's kind of like swaying around kind of as the the, the motes of, of light, the orbs basically are kind of moving with her in tandem and like her hair is kind of going wild. The owl has um, kind of popped up and he's kind of looking from like a, a top of the um, shelf, the mantle above the, the fireplace and is kind of looking down on it. Um, and then suddenly screeches and she stops everything. And the, the fire just kind of goes back to just being coals. And she stops. She starts putting her robe back on really quickly. And she turns and looks at you and she's like, You lied to me. This is Halsey. This is Halsey's soul in the body of a drow. This thing that you call Shepherd, this is Halsey. This soul has been in here a long time, but I recognize this soul. This is the soul of a man I grew up with in our coven. One who forbid our ways, left us to join the knights, to join the hand, and then came back and started murdering other witches. This was Halsey. Now I can tell he's different. He's been damaged. He's changed. He's He's been different for a long time, but I sense it's him. Whatever this is, this is the original Edmund Halsey. The the owl kind of comes over and screeches and and perches on her her shoulder and says a little something into her ear. And then she she looks back at the drow and she says, "Huh. Interesting. Well then, maybe that's a fit punishment for such a horrible person. And she stands up and she looks at you and she's like, my familiar was able to look a little bit deeper than me. And he's been able to tell me that at some point several years ago, Halsey encountered this. And she's pointing down at the drow. And she says, they swapped souls back then. So he... Halsey has been in this drow body for years. And I suppose the drow was in the body of the man I thought was Halsey. You guys killed the drow in Halsey's body, but Halsey is in there. I I know he is ashamed of some things he had done in his past. That's something he has shared with me. I don't even think he fully remembered what they were. But all I know now is that he is a changed person, he's a better person, and we need to help him. And if you're able to, I really hope you would. She um, she kind of looks down at him and looks at you, and she says, <laughs> Now, this is a good punishment for him. And she walks out. And there's all four people in the bar. <laughs> roll, a, roll a perception check real quick. I'll roll. Crit fail on me. Twelve. <laughs> what? 
Okay, Jack, you just like you're you're upset and you you go to just like kick something in anger and you end up just like busting your toe wide open. You're, <clears throat> you're so mad, but now yeah. you hurt. But Abador, you see just kind of you're not facing the doorway, but you're facing um you're facing where Shepard's laying, and you can see the light pouring in through the doorway, and you see the the silhouette, the shadow of this woman, uh Rhea, walk out. But then you see another shadow, a large shadow, fill that light. So you know that there's somebody standing behind you guys. Oi. <laughs> Who goes there? <laughs> you uh, you two turn around and you see the orc. And he's uh, looking a little sloppy, like he drank a lot because Jack paid for everything. But... Uh, he says, uh, I've rethought everything. You paid for my ale. I'll owe you for that. I'll come with you. However, I don't like taking orders. Who's the captain of this ship? Where are the captain and them they're buying, right now? They're buying the ship. So uh, they're, they're down there buying oh, the okay. boat. Our captain is Captain Stein and... Right now, he should be down near the docks. Captain Stein. All right. We'll see who's captain. But I will go with you. As he finishes talking, you see um, Grunwald and Sarah walk up kind of behind him like they're coming back. But Sarah looks much different. Sarah, um, her, her red hair is kind of pulled back and, and sort of a little bit of a ponytail. Um, some of the hair is still falling, but there's like a small ponytail kind of over the rest of her hair that's hanging down behind her. And she is decked out in full plate armor, much like the armor that Grunwald has been wearing. And she carries a war hammer instead of her mace and a shield. She actually looks a lot like Grunwald. I mean, she's decked out just the same way he is. Smaller weapon, than, than his, but she's decked out with him, and she's like, hi, everyone. Um, we had a good chat, and um, I've decided to take the same path as Grunwald. I have sworn an oath of vengeance against the Ecclesia, and with his help, we're gonna stop the Council, the Order, and any corruption within the Ecclesia. But first, we have to get to the docks. Let's grab Shepard. So you guys, um, you, you you grab him, you um, make your way to the docks, you see that uh, Captain Stein has is, is bought a ship, and you guys are ready to go. So Sarah kind of looks at you and looks at Captain Stein and is like, all right, Avador, Jack, new recruits, where are we heading? To Rice and Diathea. Captain Stein kind of looks at you and, and nods, and he starts barking orders for people to, to hoist the anchor, drop sail, start moving some cargo around a little bit, securing Shepard to um, a cot inside the um, one of the bunkers there, just kind of like strapping him down so that He's, you know, not going to, like, fall off if you guys hit any rough waves. And he says, can someone please get some clothes on him? <laughs> Good Lord. He kind of looks over at, at Jewel, and Jewel says, hello. Do you know how to help run a ship? Yes. Yes, I do. Great. <laughs> All right. Go talk to Piper and uh, El Ross. They'll, they'll tell you what you need to do. And he looks at um, the orc. And uh, puts out his hand. He says, Captain Roger Stein, thank you for coming aboard. Krog, I don't like orders. Neither do I, but sometimes we must follow them, right? Only with respect will I take orders. Well, I will respect you, and hopefully you will learn to respect me, and you will follow my lead. And Krog just kind of nods and uh, starts kind of wandering into the ship. So you guys are you're up and you're ready to set sail and head towards Rison de Ethere. I knew I had a good feeling about that orc. 
Back beneath the streets of Fangor, within the labyrinth and sewers beneath it, in the throne room, Lady Anessa sits. This time, no one is around her, not the any guards, no one to attend her. The door opens, and the reptilian-looking figure enters again, looking somewhat deflated. For the blood of all. Spare me, Sedicious. He straightens up and uh, kind of raises his face to hers. My lady, our spies report that the ship carrying our cargo has gone up in flames. Her clawed fingers begin to dig at the arms of the throne that she sits in, and the wood actually begins to crack, and a small pieces splinter off. And what of Sir Halsey? The outcasts with the cleric, Sarah of the Nine, they, they killed him. We are left with no trade for the support of Pondylus, and we have lost the coin and the key to unlock them. I am sorry, my lady. She stands, and she looks furious. How long until the Jarls make their vote? By tomorrow evening, my lady. Divert our scouts and a scryer to Pondylus. Have them report back on the whereabouts of each magistrate and the weakest points of the city. With many of the gold spears here in Fangor, their numbers will be weak. Assassinate them and their intern commanders and signal our forces to attack and take Pondylus. Once their houses fall and the gold spears are scattered, secure the mine, and their riches are ours. Yes, my lady. A sound strategy, but quite bold. And contact Rathorn in Arkham. I suspect the Sarah of the Nine, if she knows what this coin is, may be headed there for answers. Are we certain we want to risk Rathorn? The outcasts have slain several of our warriors already from the Order. They've slain Halsey. He has collected the other two coins for us without fail. His thirst for blood is nearly equal to the great Bellion the Bloody himself. I have no concerns. Very well. And Sedicious turns to leave. But she stops him. Oh, and Sedicious. We can't allow the Jarl from Sindris to take the crown. How many of the hands do we own? More than we do not. Excellent. Ensure they are present at the time of the vote. Only ours and none of the others. And give the order to execute the Jarls. My lady... You can't, we can't just kill them all, that's... I don't like the word can't. Kill the Jarls, kill their men, but spare the commander of the Knights of Scarum. He's proven easy enough to manipulate. He's the whole reason we've been able to help manipulate the hands in the first place. Along with Halsey, but now that we've lost him, we're going to have to turn him to our side as much as we can. Make him look like a hero, and others will follow his lead. But someone will be to blame. This will draw too much attention. We won't be able to hide it. <sighs> Make it happen. Thy will be done, my lady. For the blood and for our own.
Thanks for listening to this episode of Party in Peril. If you like this episode, please share it with your friends or digi friends on social media and use the hashtag NerdSloth so we can thank you for your support. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, uh, give us a rating, all those things that can help out the show. It's like rolling a nat 20 every time. See you next episode. Presented by NerdSloth. A place for lazy nerds. If you like what you heard, consider donating at patreon.com slash nerdsloth so we can continue bringing you quality shows. Be sure to also leave us a review and share your favorite episodes and clips on social media. If you're looking for more content, catch us on YouTube and Twitch or visit us at nerdsloth.com.